Hello. I'm going to process an image today to get it ready for uploading to an internet processing company. The image that I already have open has a lot of layers in it and I don't want to work on this one. I'm going to make a copy of it. So in CS3 I'll right click here and duplicate the image Merge Layers Only and click OK. And now I can close the original image without risk of doing any damage to it and work on this copy. The processing company require images to be at 300 pixels per inch. And so the first thing I'm going to do is have a look at my image size. Image, image size. And we can see that the image resolution is set at 240 pixels per inch and this will give us a file that will print at 17 by almost 13 inches at that resolution. We're going to change the resolution of the file without changing the number of pixels in it in the first instance. So untick the resample image box and change the resolution to 300 and this tells us now what size of print we're likely to get. 13.6 inches high isn't quite high enough for the image size that I want on my final print. So now I am going to resample up. So I'm going to tick the resample box. Leave the resolution at 300 pixels per inch. Change the method of resampling to bicubic smoother, which is best for enlargement. And change the height of the image to 15 inches. So long as the constrained proportions box is ticked, Photoshop will automatically change the width of the document to be in the same proportion as the height. And if we now look at the pixel dimensions, we can see that we're going from 72.8 megabytes to an 87.8 .8 megabyte file and that's fine. So we'll click OK to that. And now my image is 15 inches high at 300 pixels per inch. I'm going to order a 16 by 12 inch print and I want a white border around it. So I'm going to achieve that by changing the canvas size. So I'm going to image canvas size and type in here for my canvas size a height of 16 inches and a width of 12 inches. Make sure the canvas extension colour is set to white and if it isn't you can change that in the drop down box here and click OK. There are two reasons why I want to put the white border on at this stage. The first and most important is that the processing company will charge me extra to put a white border on, so I may as well already prepare it in the file. But I like to have a white border if I'm going to surface mount a picture. I will trim the white border down to perhaps 3 or 4 millimeters all the way around. Or if I'm going to window mount the picture, then I've got um, an extension behind the window to hold the picture down flat against the window. The next thing that I want to do is to add a little curve to this picture. Now I found by trial and error and by a process called soft proofing that I need to brighten up my lighter tones before I send this for printing. The reason for that is to compensate for the fact that the printing paper isn't an absolutely pure white. I'm going to put an anchor point down here on the curve because I don't want to alter these dark tones at all. And just lift the uh, brightness a little bit to make sure this bottom curve stays straight. And as I click the preview on and off and we look at the image, you see what it does. Just brightens up those lighter areas a little bit. So I'm going to click OK to that. The color profile of the image is Profoto RGB and in order to get the best print possible we need to change that 
to the colour profile of the printing paper that's going to be used. I do this by going to Edit, Convert to Profile and choosing the profile for the destination space from this drop-down box. Here are my DS Colour profiles for the papers that are used at the processing company. This one, the Crystal Archive, is for glossy paper. This one for luster and this one for pearl. I'm going to choose the Crystal Archive, which is for glossy paper, and make sure the flattened image is ticked on. It's useful to look at the rendering intent at this point and choose between perceptual or relative colorimetric. And as you click between them with the preview button on, just have a look at what differences it makes to your colour in your image and which you prefer. I prefer the perceptual rendering, so I'm going to click OK to that. And that has now flattened my image and also changed the colour profile. But we're still in 16-bit and so now I want to change the image to 8-bit by going to Image Mode and selecting 8 bits per channel. And lastly, before saving the image, I'm going to add a little bit of sharpening. Filter, Sharpen, Unsharp Mask. This is already quite a noisy image and it's already had some sharpening, but I have just recently upsized the image for this tutorial and I want to just add a little bit of uh, sharpening to compensate for that. Uh, let's start off with too much sharpening and just show you what happens when you go too high and how it destroys the image. Puts in some really nasty textures there. So I'm going to bring my radius down probably to around 0.3 or 0 0.4 and bring the amount down as well. Just checking how much sharpening that's giving me. Not quite enough there. I think that that will be just about right for this image and it's very much a matter of taste and experience how much you need to put on. So I'm going to click OK to that. Now the last thing that I'm going to do is, is save this as a JPEG to get the file down so I can uh, upload it to the uh, internet. And so we'll go to File, Save As, select for the format JPEG, give the file a name, let's just call it Castle, and save it somewhere on your system in Pictures. DS Colour JPEG and we put a glossy profile so that goes in the glossy folder. We already have the image in there but we'll save over the top of it. Replace it yes. And now we're being asked what size of JPEG we want to use, what quality. Now the top quality is obviously going to give us the absolute best image quality. But that will calculate an 18.1 megabyte file, which for my rather slow internet connection is rather a large file, especially if I'm sending quite a lot up together. If you save as a small file with low quality, then yes, the file size is low, but the quality is going to be quite poor. And so we want to get the best compromise we can and have a look at the file sizes for different qualities. Let's try 9. Quality 9 gives us 4.8 megabytes and I think that that's a good compromise. It's a very high quality of image and a reasonably small file size. So I'll click OK to that. And that's our image ready for upload. In the next video I'll show you how to obtain and um, install the paper profiles and also how to upload the image to the internet.